Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop tech talk number 58. There it is. Yeah, 58. Look at that. Graphics. You know how expensive that graphic was? Really? <laughs> your donations went all to that one graphic. It's uh <laughs> let's see that again. There it is. My Trust goodness. me, folks in Clubhouse, ain't that impressive. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's just a flashing that's number 58. 58. Yeah, that's it, anyway. That's it. Well, we got lots of cool stuff to talk about tonight. Uh, you know, you've got some stuff with, with Mac hardware and some other things dealing with Mac and something else that you'll probably find along the way. Uh, also, we're going to talk about, you know, one of the things we get, we get involved with is people saying, you know, it sounded like this and now it sounds like that. And uh, we had a deal with somebody, something like that this week. And uh, so that's there. But mostly we'd love your questions. So send them in in Facebook, in uh, YouTube, or on Clubhouse. We'd love to hear from you on Clubhouse. And uh, so let's rack it up. Let's roll. Time for VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together... From the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master. A professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, making the complex simple, debunking the myths of what it takes to create great sounding audio, answering your questions, showing you the latest and greatest in VO tech, and having a dandy time doing it. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, remote studio connections for everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt, VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training, J. Michael Collins Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver Body Shop. Or VO B. Yes, tech talk. Oh, tech talk, oh, tech, tech talk, tech talk, tech talk. Good to hear you again, Jeff. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's he's been gone for a little bit. Anyway, uh, we're here to talk about your home voiceover studio, uh, and because you know, there's a lot of information out there that's basically BS. Uh, I, I guess that's one way to put it. Um, and, and George and I are here to to ease the mythology out of you you know what people will say oh i use this use that everybody's an expert in one studio their own except for myself and george because we just that's what we do that's what we do we work it, with everybody we've heard it all in aggregate we've learned more than i think anybody at this point just I'm, i've probably forgotten volume. more than i've learned yeah. well that's the problem <laughs> <man>. <laughs> you know you sometimes forget certain things all of my own clients will say oh and then this works remember how that oh, oh yeah okay thanks for reminding me it's been a while exactly exactly yeah well anyway but uh, that's that's what george and i do we we help people with their home voiceover studios and uh you know, and that can cover a whole lot of things, you know, whether you've got a technical issue, whether you've got, you have no idea what on earth you're doing. Uh, we, we saw a lot of that during the pandemic where, you know, people were, you know, they're professional voice actors and then suddenly they had to do it from home and there was an awful lot of intimidation out there. So they yeah. would consult with us and we got them. It's like, usually like, just think of it as a cassette recorder. Intimidation it, navigation. In, exactly. That's what we're doing. So if you want to learn it right, you can work with us. And uh, if you want to work with George, 
who's a great teacher and knows a whole lot of stuff and is really good at presenting the really complex and making it a little less complex. <laughs> where, where would they go? Can't always count on that, but I'll try. <laughs> um, you can head over to georgethe.tech or georgethetech.com. And uh, my services are over there. Uh, someday soon, oh, please, we're going to have a new website with a whole new fresh design and a new look and a new navigation and a new booking system and a new ticket tracking system and on and on. And I'm really excited about it, but it's not here yet. So the old site is still functional, F-U-N-K, functional. Um, so come over there and you can book services there. Send me questions. Uh, you can get an answer. Let's say you got a couple of questions and you're like, I know that George is kind of busy. How can I get his attention? You can get an answer service and just pay for uh, me to answer a bunch of questions in an email. That way you get my undivided attention. So you might not know about that. Give it a shot. And Dan does a lot of the same stuff in his own special kind of way over at his site. And that is... Why can't we hear you, Dan? I'm Take muted. Two. Take two. Yeah. Okay. And Dan's can be heard over at <laughs> homevoiceoverstudio.com. There you, know, you adjust the mic, you turn it off. So I'm not bothering everybody. And it's like, oh yeah, I got to turn it back on. Don't Damn I? technology. I know. Yeah. You know, when you're doing voiceover and you're recording stuff, like, why is there no voice? Mm -hmm. Oh, happens to everybody oh yeah i, I wish there was like a really cool nifty on the air or record tally light mm. that was just sort of universal like you could just it's a red light you put it on your monitor or whatever that you know whatever thing you look at the most maybe your computer and uh if no audio is flowing it would start uh reminding you turn on your mic wouldn't that be cool there it is. I'm thinking, I'm thinking like something <laughs> tally that's light, like a, tally yeah, light. I'm thinking like a box that monitors the audio flowing between the mic and your software or something like that. And it would just know if there's no audio coming through. It'd be like, Hey, your mic is off. Zoom does that. Doesn't it? Like if you, if you oh, it'll say you're off, muted, yeah, it'll say you're yeah, muted. I'm like, exactly. Oh, yeah, Zoom right. can do that. <laughs> we should be able to do that across the board. Right. Absolutely. Anyway, if you want to work with me, go over to homevoiceoverstudio.com. And, uh, we'll, I'll teach you from soup to nuts, how to do this. It's not all that hard, but if you don't know what you don't know, you need somebody who does know what they know. And I can teach you that sort of thing. Uh, also, if you've got audio, if you've got a studio set up, if you got all the equipment that everybody else said, you got to get this mic and you got to get that and you got to get this and you got to get that. And then you got to set up your studio and you're going to be a closet. And you got to spend $6,000 on a, on a booth or what, if you got your studio set up, whether big and impressive or, you know, in a corner somewhere, uh, you can send me your audio, uh, via my specimen collection cup. And, uh, I will give it a listen and I will give it a thorough analysis because George and I will tell you, we can listen to something for five seconds and we know what's going on in your studio. Uh, a lot of it is acoustical. Most of it is physical, but unless we hear it, we don't know. So go on over to homevoiceoverstudio.com and check that out. Also, I've got a I've got a series of webinars coming up on Voiceover Extra, so go on over to Voiceover Extra and check those out. Three part series on that's one, two, three part series <laughs> on how to do a home voiceover studio on construction, on uh, recording and editing, and then another one on uh, processing and uh, real so soup to nuts thing. It's yeah, it's going to be over two weeks and. You know, I'm not going to sleep. They're going to slip me meals under the door, but we're going to get all that information out. You'll be able to ask all the questions you want and, uh, and get my explanation of how all that stuff works. And anyway, now I that we're thoroughly time, into it. Yeah. By the time this one airs, which is on the next Monday, next 14th, Sunday. Or yeah. The, the tomorrow, 13th, yeah. the day yeah. after <laughs> this is when I do my Adobe audition. So you can still sign up. And if you miss the deadline or if you just can't be there live you can get the recording of the webinar later and i know that's true for dan's too by the way guys yeah. don't forget you these are recorded all yeah, these webinars get the recording. are recorded you can always got watch them later and mine is on the 15th on adobe audition so if you want to sign up for that ever go to george the dot tech right okay enough plugs right let's mine's get on the 15th stuff. also but it's in the evening yours is in the afternoon boom boom you can do yeah. a double header and have a that's that's full right. day yeah. of learning 
you will know what's going on by the end of that. <laughs> and then we're doing one on the 17th and then uh, the following week on the, uh, the 24th. So Very uh, nice. yes. Anyway, what's up in your tech update for this week? Honestly, I was really disappointed. <laughs> I really expected there to be some really new cool things from Apple in terms of hardware okay. uh, announced today. Today was the worldwide developer conference uh, keynote. So this is when Apple comes out and says, hey, developers, here's all the things you should know about when you're writing your next software for Apple products, mobile devices, the desktop, et cetera, et cetera. And sometimes they use that opportunity to announce new hardware that tends to be on the pro side of things. So there was a lot of rumors saying expect a new MacBook Pro 14 inch and a new 16 inch. That wouldn't, that didn't happen. So um, at least that, not that I'm aware of. I did a little research quickly and didn't see anything. So uh, nothing new on the hardware side of things. So we're gonna have to probably wait till, I think it's autumn when they would do a hardware announcement. But you know, it's Apple. They kind of hold all the cards. So they could do it at any time. We'll see what happens. Um, so there's not much no, there's not new in the hardware. The new software, the new Mac OS that's coming after Big Sur, which many of you are still not using, which is, totally fine, believe me, um, is going to be called Monterey. Um, You're so just moving a little of, further up the coast, I guess. That's right. You know, <laughs> they could just hit from, they just go from state park or national park to beach, who knows. Um, but uh, Monterey's next. And uh, I didn't see anything game changing as usually is the case. There's, in our world, we, we want a computer that's stable, reliable, pain-free, and oftentimes the latest way to synchronize files and move seamlessly between devices isn't always all that relevant, but uh, there is a thing that's going to allow your mouse to work across multiple devices. So what I understand that means is you could have an iPad that's doing iPad type stuff sitting next to your MacBook and the same mouse pointer could be moving seamlessly between them. So now you're actually operating a mouse on an iPad. I bet a lot of you didn't know you could do that. Did you know you could use a mouse on an iPad, Dan? I did not know that. I think it came out maybe a year or so ago, but uh, this is something that's worked forever on Android, but is, uh, you know, it's funny. Android people, they love to poke fun at Apple because Apple tends to adapt to new technologies after it's been already in use on the Android platform for <laughs> sometimes years. Um, but anyway, yes, you can do that. You can get a new iPad Pro and put it up on a little stand with a keyboard and a trackpad, and it will feel and operate like a MacBook. The problem is, it's like an expensive MacBook. The iPad Pros aren't cheap. What are they? Thousand plus dollars? Twelve hundred. Yeah. Th yeah. Then you More. buy the keyboard and tray, the keyboard stand they have for it, which is another couple hundred dollars. Before you know it, you have a fifteen hundred dollar iPad. And really, honestly, a MacBook Air M1 for around a thousand, I think, blows it away in terms of functionality for studio use. Now, if you're an artist and you do a lot of graphic work, okay, the screen on the iPad Pro is unbelievably good, um, but that is really a, such a niche. And for voiceover, to me, the MacBook will win hands down, time after time. When you're comparing dollars to donuts. Which one should you buy? A, a Mac is far more useful because of the operating system. It's a real OS. There's a file manager. You know, there's all these tools that are for productivity that just are falling behind. So we'll have to see what comes out with iOS 15. Um, there was a lot of stuff around iOS 15 announced today. So you could go to apple.com and watch the WWDC uh, announcement and see if there's anything that really piques your interest. If you see the, the announcements and see something that's like, okay, this actually would be pretty amazing for my voiceover business, leave it in the comments below. I'd love to, I'd love to know. Um, system, let's talk about system updates. We talk about this you know, from time to time. But what I'm finding is if you are using, and so here's some rules of thumb. I always say, if it ain't broke, don't fix it, et cetera, et cetera. The thing is, if you have a brand new Mac, the latest generation, okay, so that assumes you probably have a silicon-based Mac, the M1 series, um, 
there's some best practices to keep aware of. So I'm normally one that says, when you're in a stable state of your system, leave it there, right? The problem is if you're on a new Mac, the latest version, you are not in a stable state yet, okay? There are constantly updates being pushed out from Apple and thereby the developers of all the software you use and then the drivers from the companies that make the hardware you use. All that stuff's ever changing, okay? It is not going to be stable, completely honestly, until the end of Big Sur. So when Monterey comes out, usually in October, Big Sur will be fully baked. That's what I always like to say. It's fully baked now. Um, and at that point, it's now a, a locked down system. So when you get to that stage, you can count on Big Sur being the same way it was the day before and the day after. It's not going to change on you. Um, there's not going to be a new update to completely upset everything. Um, but there will be security updates, and those continue onward. So that's why running High Sierra or even Sierra, uh, which is what, eight years old? Are we yeah, talking eight a, years old? Yeah, it's, it's been around. Uh, even if you're running these old systems, Apple does still keep their security updates, I think, up to date for up to 10 years, I believe is right. So um, you don't have to worry about being on the newest OS to stay secure. So as long as you're doing security updates, you're fine. And I've never heard of a security update breaking a system, like making a sound driver go crazy or whatever. I, have, I haven't either. I've never experienced that. I have not. So on the flip side of that, um, in the Windows world, I've been having clients coming to me saying I'm getting glitching in their audio and stuff. And I mean, once you have a Windows system dialed in, of course it works fine. But the problem is you can't shut down the updates on a Windows system. So it will continuously push out system updates that you cannot disable permanently. And um, they, they call it Patch Tuesdays. So watch out on uh, Thursday or Wednesday morning. Um, definitely, uh, you might even leave your computer off the day before or the night just to make sure it doesn't push a new update and surprise you because that can happen on Windows systems. So please be careful about yeah. that. You still can't I, I, yeah. lock it down. I, I've noticed that, you know, with working with the M1, certain programs won't work. And then you'll see an update and you do it and suddenly everything starts working. We're uh, still, you know. yeah, we're still in this state of new things all the time coming out. Like there is no official uh, Universal Audio Apollo support on the M1. It works. And they actually do have a step-by-step -step guide on how to make it work, which I find interesting. It's like, it does work, but we don't support it. But here's how you do it, but we don't support it. It's like, what? It's crazy. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of that going on right now. So um, just beware, if you're going to buy a new Mac, do realize that you're, a front, you're, you're, you're forging new trails or blazing new trails, so to speak. You're a, you're a pioneer. Um, and things go weird. Like tonight, my camera froze uh, when we were doing the last episode, and uh, I had to unplug it. So that stuff's just gonna happen now yeah, um, i don't have many complaints about apple i mean i've, been, a, I've yeah. been an apple user for you know close to 20 years now and uh finally you know i was i was i was cleaning off of my old mac mini and i you know something it wouldn't load take it over to the you know we tried everything online nothing worked took it over to the genius bar over at the sherman oaks uh, apple store dropped it off they i get a message call me back. We've, you know, we have something to tell you. I call, they don't answer the phone there. I'm apparently they don't answer the phone at the Apple stores. It goes directly to Apple. And then the people from Apple can't get a hold of the store either. Mm. So I'm like, I have to go actually over to the mall to the Apple store, stand in line and say, what was that? <laughs> and they'll say, you know, hey. and they're like, we have to, we have to, it's a major repair on this. And I'm like, yeah, you know, it's a three-year-old Mac. What, what could possibly go wrong with it? So they're, they're waiting for the part. And then a week and a half goes by and I get another message. Same thing. Call me back. I call it. I just go to Apple. They have to call them. Oh, I can't no. get the answer. I got to get in the car, drive over to the mall. Fortunately, it's five minutes from here. Yeah. And, and finally, you know, and the person's like, well, I'll talk to the person. And then suddenly my phone rings. Oh yes, we have an update for you. Thanks. I figure a company that's got stock value the way Apple does, 
They can afford to have some people answering the phone, but no. Yeah. So it's the one time in There's all the years it's I like, what is going on over there? Yeah. Yeah. I, I went to buy a phone for, um, my girlfriend's sister, um, over in Iran. So I went and bought a new, I went to just, I wanted to just go up and buy a product, right? <laughs> you have to make Good an appointment. Good luck. <laughs> you have to make an appointment to buy a product, um, which I thought was fascinating. They're like, well, go to the app, buy the product on the app. We'll have it ready for you by the end of the day. But actually it only takes about a half hour. So hang around and then come <laughs> in in a half an hour and then we can give you the product. I'm like, oh, come on, you guys. <laughs> Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Anyway, yeah. Listen, I know a lot of this is pandemic related and it's going to become normalized, hopefully. Eventually. Um, another little thing I popped in here is about USB mics. And I talked about one a couple of weeks ago, and there's always new technology on the horizon with USB mics. And certainly we've talked about how uh, they can be used to incredibly good effect quality wise. And here's a reason that you might be a little bit embarrassed by your USB mic uh, in a session. If you're being live directed, so you're on Source Connect or IPTL or whatever it is, and they start telling you to mess with your gain knob, what is it going to sound like to the studio producers, the directors, the cast, whoever is on that Zoom or that session, when they say, can you adjust your gain? And they hear on the other end, uh, sure, just a minute. <laughs> As you adjust the controls that are physically on your microphone not very professional so um my point is that if you can buy a really good sounding let's say apogee hype mic 300 something bucks right for this great mic, and it has that problem or you can get an audio technica 2035 or a harlan hogan vo1a and a hundred dollar usb interface for almost the same money sometimes even cheaper, depending on what mic you get. And you don't have any of those embarrassing problems. So, um, and the other problem with USB mics that tend to plague folks is length of cable. You can't very likely have like your USB mic, let's say in your walk-in closet or some other part of your room, and then your computer outside because of the computer fan making noise and easily and reliably run USB over long distances. I'm not saying it doesn't work, and many of you are going to comment, well, I'm doing it and it works fine, but I can tell you oftentimes those longer USB cable runs are problematic, so you want to definitely avoid them whenever you possibly can. All right, Dan, All right. what's this discussion about? Why would things sound different? I'm guessing somebody asked you this question or... Well, we, we, we had a deal with this this week, you and I, uh, a client of mine is like, so-and-so said my sound, I sound like I have a, a bucket over my head. Right. You know, and yes, I, and I, yes. I, 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 you know, I, I built this guy's original studio and you know it well. you know, it's, and I, and I know it well, he's made a few changes to it. And, uh, why would something sound different? You know, but from a troubleshooting point of view, there's a lot of things you would ask, like changing mics. Change, is, are you using a different mic? He was using a 416 and a TLM 103, which okay. are two mics that sound very, very different um, in, in different technique, which is actually what, what, what we decided was the actual problem. Mm -hmm. But if you, know, you go into your studio and someone says to you, why does it sound different? It's like, well, are you talking to the mic the same way? is if you're in your closet, did you take something to the cleaners? That's one of my favorite things. Uh, <laughs> right. You know, or is it winter and all the uh, sweaters and comforters that were on the shelf? They're, they're now hell. back in there and it's, yeah. you know, suddenly it sounds a lot more uh, echoey. Hollow, in there. Yeah. Um, and, uh, you know, so th things change. I, I generally find, unless you're using a PC, uh, that, you know, the settings aren't going to change on you. It, you know, the, the computer's not going to say, you know, I like this setting better and just change something over. Although generally sometimes if you're talking to the wrong side of the mic and we get that one an awful lot. Uh, so, you, you know, know, that's what it sounds like. <laughs> like when, when it's, <laughs> it's like, backwards. why does it sound so muffled? Because you're not talking. It's a, if it sounds it's boomy a, and diffuse and echoey, you're probably talking into the, the wrong side, of the, side of the mic. Yeah. Uh, not so hard. It's, it's not, you can't do that with a 416 unless you have, you're talking. Yeah, the that is, and then you're not going to hear anything. It's difficult. <laughs> if there's one advantage to a shotgun mic is that it's, you'd have to be a, well, I'm not going to say it. You'd have to be really out of there. 
out there to uh is this a flute is this is this the right way to do it I mean, no yeah no <laughs> you gotta talk into the right side of the mic uh but what eventually we decided was wrong with this person's audio and it really was not that bad i think the person who was complaining was exaggerating a little bit because there was a difference between what his 416 sounded like and his tlm 103 sounded like right and the the contrast in the two made it sound different did it sound worse did it sound unacceptable to me it was like you know as he went through the read a little bit further i'm like you know it sounds like he's on a tlm 103 and a little bit of bass reflex but nothing serious and this guy has it's a really nice booth so you know george has discovered that in a small booth i mean we're always talking about you know the old uh, hang ten thing a low ceiling with a low ceiling did he have a yeah. relatively low ceiling like how I, much space do you know that he he's had? a tall guy so it was probably a little yeah. bit low yeah. uh but you know we've come to the conclusion that if you you keep it to a fist like three to five inches about that distance in a smaller booth that gen if you're talking in a normal conversational tone it's, right. it's going to sound fine and yeah, it, uh, it once we got him to change it worked great it changes that ratio that of distance between you the mic and you in the closest hard surface, which if you're tall in a small space is the <laughs> ceiling. And you know, you could add more acoustic treatment to the ceiling. Sometimes that's not always viable because you might not just physically have the room. You know, you might right. end up having so much up there it's hitting your head. Another thing you can do is um, you can also, um, if you're really desperate to, to tune out that sound and you're having trouble, try, I'm not gonna say sitting, because that's going to really change your body posture, but leaning might be a good idea. You might check out some of those high stools that you can lean against. So you'll still have an upright body and hopefully a mostly unsquished, compressed diaphragm, and you can sort of lean. And now just that dropping your head four to six inches could be all that it takes to really get a better sound. So yeah. that's another thing you can experiment with. So in the end, it was just, at the end of the day, mic placement, huh? It was mic technique. Absolutely. Okay. I mean, he sounds great on no matter what he was doing, but right. um, by back, you know, by getting a little closer to the mic and, you know, and adjusting his, you know, his input gain to adjust for being a little bit closer to the mic. It, it wasn't right. that close that you were getting proximity effect, but it sounded, it sounded more like the 416, which is actually you know, pretty good if you did between those two mics. So, uh, I, I anyway. find that they found those two mics sound really different when you're at a distance, right? When you're working them in their like sweet spot. And of course that depends on your space, but when you're working them in that sweet spot, they start to sound a lot more similar. Have you yeah. found that to be the case? I certainly have, you know, I, yeah. you know, I, I have a 416 in my booth when I, you know, when I'm, you know, this is just my, this is just my, my, you know, my you workspace here. Working like. Right. But you know, it sounds as good as it does in the booth. It may be a little bit different. I mean, I could go in there and you could hear the difference and go, yeah, but it sounds like you. And that's the most important thing because as we always say, the idea of your home voiceover studio is not to make you sound great. If you're a good voice actor, you already sound great. The idea is to make it sound like you. Yep. And on that point, we're going to take a commercial break and uh, we're going to answer your questions, which should start flowing in here any second they now certainly are. on Clubhouse, on Facebook, on YouTube, um, and wherever else people are listening or watching the show. Uh, we're going to get to those in just a minute. So stay tuned. We'll be right back here on VoiceOver Body Shop Tech Talk. Hi, this is Bill Farmer, and you are watching VoiceOver Body Shop. It's great. And now a word from Amazon Prime and VoiceOverEssentials.com. Amazon.com is celebrating small businesses again this Prime Day like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials. Congratulations, VoiceOver Essentials. Your successful small business will be included in our Prime Day promotion, saving your Amazon Prime customers money. Here's how. Prime members in the U.S. get a $10 credit to use on Prime Day when they spend $10 or more on select VoiceOver Essentials products from June 7, 2021 to June 20, 2021. Prime Store cardholders in the U.S. earn up to 10% back on select VoiceOver Essentials purchases from June 7th to June 20th. Of course, you must be a Prime member to take advantage of this offer. These select VoiceOver Essentials products earn you a $10 credit on any eligible product on Prime Day. Not just ours, like the Harlan Hogan Portabooth Pro and Portabooth Plus, the Harlan Hogan VO1A Signature Microphone, 
the Harlan Hogan stopwatch, and the multicolor LED recording sign. Don't miss these great Prime Day specials at voiceoveressentials.com. Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? Stick around. You don't want to miss this. Power 103.9. At Target, we want you to come as you are. Be comfortable. Uh, okay, maybe not bathrobe comfortable. Pants for the customer in aisle four, please. Nuevo México necesita un cambio. La representante Michelle Lujan Grisham ha luchado por nuestro estado en la Cámara de Representantes. Watch anywhere, anytime on an unlimited number of devices. Sign in with your Netflix account to watch instantly at Netflix.com. The ice cream maker is a big risk that can have huge rewards until you forget to turn it on. Well, that's it, guys. Time is up. Hey, it's JMC. Thanks for watching the voiceover body shop. If you're demo ready or looking to get there, check out jmcdemos.com and see a sample of our work. Now let's get back to Dan and George and this week's tech wisdom. Before that additional tech wisdom we're going to be sharing with you in just a minute, because we have a ton of questions, I do have to share a little bit about Source Elements. Source Connect is one of their biggest products by far. It's the one that they built their whole company on. And it's still the one that is the most relevant of all of the tools in the toolbox that Source Elements has, and they have a lot of them, trust me, that you probably want to know about. Now, Source Connect 4's earliest beta is coming out soon for beta testing. So there is a light at the end of that tunnel of the next version of Source Connect. But for now, in the foreseeable future, you're going to be using Source Connect 3.9, or if you're on Windows, 3.8, to connect to studios all around the world. And one thing I want to mention that I haven't talked about for a while, but is a really valuable feature is this thing called Queue Manager. So something that you don't even realize is happening, and you can be on Source Connect standard and use this. You don't need Pro as the actor. This is a misconception. The studio has to have Pro, but you as talent can be on the standard version. There is a feature called Queue Manager, and what it's doing is it's constantly recording everything you're doing in the software, sort of behind the scenes. So whether you're using Pro Tools or any DAW, it could be Twisted Wave, or you don't even have to be running a DAW. As long as Queue Manager is running and you're logged in, the session is being recorded internally and backed up. And what that means is, if something goes wrong, let's say there's a glitch, a sudden drop in the signal from the internet wobbling or whatever it is that the internet does, the audio can automatically be filled back in, in the timeline in Pro Tools. So the, the track that you are in that session, who knows how many tracks there are, if there's a little drop in the signal, Pro, uh, Source Connect and Pro Tools talk to each other, and it says, hey, by the way, we lost some audio. Can you reach out to the computer of the actor on the other side, pull that little section of audio that fell out, send it to us in the background, and fill it back in automatically? Thanks, that would be great. It just does that automatically. It's really amazing. And beyond that, if the studio session wants full quality, uncompressed, raw wave file audio, that also is built in. So at the end of the session, they can have the entire session resent to them in wave format, and it fills in the timeline. It is amazing, amazing stuff. And it's so underutilized. I just wanted to make sure I could talk about it and, and remind folks that that feature exists. Anyway, Source Connect, go get a demo, get it up and running. Be ready to go when those big sessions come a knock in the ones that often use Source Connect. And let's get out of here and go back and answer some questions. Thanks, Source Elements. We'll be right back. Ooh, I think I heard the voice of a body shop. I did. I did hear the voice of a body shop. Shop. And we are back here at VoiceOver Body Shop. And yes, uh, yep. uh, this is a Nestle mug, by the way. Okay. <laughs> Jeff was asking me, is that a Nestle or Nescafe mug from the 80s? I have no idea how old it is because I got it at a yard sale. Yard sale. <laughs> but that is indeed what it is. Good call, my friend. Alrighty. <laughs> okay, we got lots of questions here. Let's start. Do we have anything on Clubhouse? Oh, sure. Yeah, I had. Uh, let's see. The first one I see on Clubhouse that's queued is from 
Alan. Alan, you're up, sir. Good evening, guys. Alan Good evening. Hi. I just wanted to say great show. Allison was amazing. Uh, know a lot of her work and, uh, and, uh, getting onto the tech side, you guys were talking about computers earlier. I was having the big, the big fan problem with my MacBook pro. Mm -hmm. And, uh, so I, I dumped it and I got, got an M12. It's a Mac 12. And I picked, picked it up for like 600 bucks. It's uh, 2018 and it's been flawless. It's phenomenal. No ports on it. So I had to get the tower. So I have the tower with the HDMI and the audio and it's got everything I need on that. And it runs pretty much everything in my, when you say the tower, is that like a dock that plugs into it and it gives you all the yeah. other connections? Yeah. Yeah. Cause it has the USB C coming out of the, out of the MacBook. Right. And uh, so you plug into that and now you have all your ports. So I've got a 12 port uh, tower mm -hmm. that I plug it, plug everything wow. into from my mic, my condenser, my, I mean, everything plugs. Does in. that also charge your MacBook for you as well? Because you have to hardwire that. So there's a, there's a, uh, a, a power outlet. So this one has power. Right. So yeah. I have to keep Very that nice. in, but yeah, it, it, it keeps everything, everything on. It runs both of my monitors on the wall as well as the monitor on the MacBook. So yeah, works great. Excellent. Brilliant. Brilliant. Did you have a question or you just want to give us a cool tip? Just, just wanted to give a, a cool tip. Awesome. But thanks so thanks, much. Thanks for having me. All right, Ellen, take care. All righty. All right. We got a question from Jeff. Our very George. Jeff Holman. Yeah, George, you mentioned in the last few shows how flat Oralex foam panels without the accordion-like grooves are better at their job than the ones with. Why then do we see the accordion ones in most professional studios? Do we? Yeah, I see all sorts. I see pyramidal. I see all sorts of stuff in studios. I think you see the uh, corrugated accordion pyramid wavy ones. Uh, I don't have a strong answer for that. But they have been distributed with many, many, many prefabricated studios, vocalbooth.com, Whisper Room. Uh, and so I think they're just, it's, it's momentum. It's like people see them and that's what they're familiar with. Um, I also think there's a bit of skullduggery going on because the other ones that are, you know, wave patterns and pyramids and stuff, they can sell you a more uh, expensive piece of foam uh with less material so i'm um, maybe theoretically it's cheaper for them to manufacture it that way i mean it doesn't make sense because it's more complicated to cut those patterns but um i don't really know i i i know i know acoustically what the idea of it is is that it does allow for a little bit more of uh, a liveliness to occur so it makes it work more like a diffuser and an absorber um, and, but that's not what we really want in a small voiceover booth. We want to absorb, we want to absorb as much energy as possible. Yeah. So, um, a flat panel that has as much, you know, even density across the board that covers as much space as you possibly can almost always is going to win. That's why Dan years ago had his studio suit blankets. Um, they're very large coverage devices that have no you know, pyramids or waves. They were just huge great. flat panels and they worked beautifully. Now there's vocal booth to go blankets and there's other, you know, there's tons of these blanket type materials and they work great. Um, they still work awesome. Um, so we, we don't really care about that extra design cue with the, the corrugation. In fact, it ends up being worse per square foot. So uh, yeah, if you are going to go foam, Get the, get the flat panels that don't have all those waves. Yeah. Very good. Okay. We've got a question here from Gerard Maguire. Uh, why don't you read that one? I can't do it in that accent and I won't even try. Okay. Um, he says a video game auditions say they want no processing. No with an E. That's how you know it's important. <laughs> uh, but would like the average RMS, average level, to be around minus 18 dB so would using LoudMax to adjust the RMS be noticeable to their tech person? I am so glad that you asked this question, Gerard. 
This spec makes me freaking nuts. When's the last time you've recorded anything raw and not processed and have the RMS of that file actually be minus 18? Never happens. Like maybe if you're doing like a, like a commercial with like a very standard single dynamic range voice, you know, where you're just projecting the same way the whole time, maybe you'll get minus 18 dB average. Like that is incredibly rare. The problem with this spec is it's confusing. It's misspoken. So in this case, what you're saying is a, is a misspoken uh, interpretation of what it is they actually want. <laughs> so I, they're, they're I, just not I, good at expressing it. They're not good at expressing it because it's like a game of telephone. How many times <laughs> have we talked about telephone, right? Where you, people are just passing what they heard is the thing you're supposed to say to the next guy down the line. <laughs> it's tech telephone. So they're, they're telling you these things, but that's not what they're, they're not talking about the average volume of your recording being minus 18. No, no, no. They're talking about the average peak levels in the recording being around minus 18. And the thing is, I don't know how to, I don't know how to measure that. I, I don't, I could be totally missing something here. Maybe there's a simple analyzing thing in audition or something that will do that, but I don't know how to do that. All I really think in my mind is they want to make sure that a lot of the time the recording levels don't go into the yellow very far. Uh, what is yellow between minus 12 and minus six, right? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah. Minus 18 would be six below the yellow. If you record with levels peaking at minus 18, that's super low. Like that wave is going to be like tiny. So it's a very confusing request. Um, and at the end of the day, my opinion is this, just, just record with best practices. Just, just if it's in the yellow, let it mellow. If you're in the red, you're almost dead. So just back <laughs> off the gain a little bit. And honestly, you're going to be fine. I, th I think it's something that's been overthought, miscommunicated, and obviously is confusing folks. So that's my opinion. Do you, and again, that is, that is really video games that are asking that weird spec. Have you seen it anywhere, Dan? Like, you I, ever see that? I, I, you know, I see it in specs that people send to me saying, you know, the client is asking for this right. and the client's asking for that. And it's exactly. Like, yeah. It sounds like they don't understand what they're talking about because like you say, it's been passed down from place to place to place. And, you know, you know, from the engineer to the creative director, to the producer, to the agent, who's the worst person at trying to figure out what they're talking about. Yeah. They're just and, regurgitating what they've been given or right, some version right. of it or what some right. intern copied and pasted and maybe mistyped or misheard on the phone. Right. Ugh. Exactly. Exactly. All righty. Uh, one from Grace Newton on YouTube. Congrats on Tech Talk 58. Well, <laughs> we'll just keep doing it. Uh, will you please recommend microphones that have a built-in plosive reducing feature? I want to ditch my pop filter as advised by Mark Cashum and, and by me. Uh, well, it's not the microphone, uh, Grace. Uh, it's, it's mic technique. You'll notice that I can say Peter Piper picked a pack of pickle peppers all day long and we're not getting any plosives. It's all technique. If you've got it at eye level, your copy is down here. You're hearing me directly in front of the mic, but the mic is at ear level where other people hear you. And that's the way it's supposed to sound for the most part. I mean, you can, you can use proximity effect, or if you're going to be whispering, you can get close to the mic but you talk a little bit off axis so you can go Peter Piper picked a pack of pickle peppers and you won't get that. It's all technique. Pop screens are to prevent you from spitting on expensive microphones as far as I'm concerned, or okay. for, you know, for singers who have to work the mic really, really close for a lot of subtle stuff in for normal Billy Eilish kind of sound. Yeah. That Billy Eilish kind of sound. How, I, I, how does she get away with that? She uses a really good microphone. That's why happens to use a TLM one Oh three. That's right. Uh, and uh, so it's all technique, Grace. Don't worry about a microphone that's going to prevent that because that's not what microphones do. Microphones pick up what they get. And if you talk directly into the diaphragm, you're going to get plosives. Just like that. And honestly, any mic that has enough pop screen or pop filtering built into the microphone to then stop 100% of your plosives doesn't sound very good. 
<laughs> it takes away some of the articulation of the mic. It doesn't sound as clear and clean as it would be without it. So right. um, there are some very pop, very expensive pop filters out there, and some of them are very good. But it's still not a substitute. Even with that really good pop screen, you will still pop that mic if you don't use it correctly. Right. All right, let's go back to Clubhouse. Pilar is there. Hey, hello, Pilar. Pilar. Well, hello there. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Hi there. I um I have a uh Mac MacBook Pro 2016. And um lately it has been sounding the the so what I use when I'm editing is I use I use my headphones. But obviously sometimes I want to just listen with the internal um the internal speakers and they have this crackly sound like inside the system it's starting to break down may i play it for you real quick just so you can hear it george and dan sure, sure. we might be able to hear it over clubhouse sure give it a shot let me see if you can hear this mm. Oof. yeah <laughs> wow, that's really bad yeah, it's, yeah. It's i would say really don't bad. use and those literally, it just happened it like literally like from one day to the next and it's just gotten slowly worse. But what if you I plug do? your headphones into the headphone jack, that sounds com it sounds perfectly normal, right? Exactly. Yeah. Well, I think that answers the question right there. I think they might have gotten "quote unquote" blown. Yeah. Um, Playing it too loud and. Uh... Yeah, I I I've never I don't know if I've ever heard a MacBook Pro have speakers that sound quite like that. I've I've been really impressed. I would I really wouldn't use them except for just a quick e playback, just because I don't have a. Uh, something else better plugged in but i even my macbook air which the speakers are literally inside the keyboard you know there the sound comes through sounds a lot better than that so yeah i i think something mechanically uh has failed um or the amplifier that drives those speakers is going bad itself and again i i haven't heard that before and being a so 2016 yeah. is means that's you're something that's in turn internal yeah you, with yeah. a 2016 there's no chance of you probably getting that fixed unless it is literally a separate a, a separate um component inside there like if it's a separate little board that's the amplifier that can be replaced i find it a, a long shot but it'd be worth asking apple about getting it repaired what are you holding dan oh, this, this is actually a speaker from an alexa that yeah. died on me for some reason. But this is pretty much what you're going to find in your in your average laptop. Or tinier than that. Yeah, you're, he's you're holding up something that. that's the size of about an, a quarter or maybe a half dollar around. Yeah. Yeah. And small. they sound fabulous. But the, the thing is, is that, you know, things break. You know, you play something too loud. Uh, it can't handle certain frequencies as well as it used to. And that's probably what the crackling is. So Yeah, I, I think it might be the amplifier, not the speakers themselves. But it's interesting that, that the headphones still sound perfectly normal, which thank yeah. goodness, you know, I'm glad that that's the case. Um, but you know, for your case use case, I would probably grab a, uh, like a $40, uh, anchor, um, uh, sound, uh, speaker, Bluetooth speaker. Um, I have, I actually have iLoud microphones. Yeah. She's, she's got the iLoud yeah. speakers. Oh yeah. yeah, 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 are yeah awesome. Yeah, but yeah. when you're talking portability, those are still, a quite a bit more bulky, you know? So if you really are having trouble because of portability and you want something more portable, an Anchor Sound, a Bluetooth speaker, I think they're called Soundcore 2. Um, they have a, an, aux, an aux jack, so you can plug them right into the headphone jack and that would okay. be a backup plan for you and yeah. not a lot of money and something still pop portable. So dang, that stinks. Anchor, A-N-K-E-R? Yeah, that's how they spell it. A N K E R. Okay, I I have one. My girlfriend's got one. We got one for her dad. We I've been really impressed with the the low distortion the speakers have. You know, the sound coming out of the speaker has really low distortion. It sounds very natural, and it's incredible how good a forty dollar uh you know USB speaker or I'm sorry Bluetooth speaker sounds nowadays. They've gotten much better. That one's really impressed me. Yeah. Okay. Well, thanks, guys. I appreciate it. Sure. Okay, Sorry okay. about the news. Okay. All righty. Alton Hoover asks, I think this is one's for you. Are people thinking the wave foam is like an anechoic surface? I guess. Yeah. Lots of jargon there. 
So anechoic <laughs> means doesn't echo. Um, there, I think they're wishing it was doing that. <laughs> People wish it's, that it, their yeah. <laughs> that piece of foam wasn't reflecting any sound and creating an anechoic surface, but it's not. So um, that must be why, you know. I don't think most people know even what an anechoic is or has even seen an anechoic space, let alone actually have been inside one. Um, there's actually anechoic challenges. I, th I don't know if there's any on YouTube. I think I've, I've heard that there might be, but uh, it's where someone goes into an actual anechoic chamber and sees how long they can survive or like how long they can stand being inside them because of the incredible low noise basically all you can hear is your yeah. own breathing and your heartbeat <laughs> and that is it that's all you could hear and people go crazy inside these yeah. things so uh, yeah i guess my I, guess alton yeah okay j horace black asks hey, george uh does source connect work well with the m1 Mac? I that haven't noticed fine. any problems I, I i we we tested it early on it was one of the many applications that i like as soon as I got my MacBook, I uh, my MacBook M1, I immediately just started installing everything on it that I no, that that we use normally. You know, I everything short of Pro Tools I installed on it, and everything I tried on it with worked, including Source Connect. So uh, I have no reason to believe it should be any less stable than any other uh, Mac at this point. But again, everything that's new in Bleeding Edge has to be vetted and tested. Uh, in the real world, and you need to give it some time to make sure that you can trust it, you know, because again, I, during our show, my webcam will freeze. I, is it the webcam or is it my M1 Mac mini? I don't know. <laughs> Cause there's not, you know, there's not a lot of people that have them. So I can't, I can't reach out for support yet too, too easily. So you're just going to have to be prepared for having, uh, some time to test and have a backup plan if something doesn't quite work, Yeah, but it should be right. fine. All right, let's go back to Clubhouse, and Joseph has a question. Go for it. Hey, Joseph, unmute your mic, bottom right-hand corner. Thanks, Danny. Ooh, hey, what's going on, guys? Hey. Going? hey. What's up? Um, yeah, I actually, I'm, I'm brand new to the whole voiceover thing. I'm, I'm trying to get everything started and everything. Um, I've had somewhat recording equipment for quite a long time, but I never really learned how to use it quite as well as I should have. Um, but, uh, you know, now I know as far as voiceover goes, everything has to be completely silent and, you know, it's, it's very critical and, you know, um, very cutthroat, I guess you could say, as far as yeah. what they, what they want and what they, you know, what, what the clients demand as far as that. Um, I was just wondering, you know, I have, um, I just had bought a, a new microphone, a Lawton, LS 208, uh, front, you know, uh, front address, uh, condenser mic, mm -hmm. um, as well as, uh, I have a focus, right. Four I four, uh, third generation. Okay. Uh, Cubase, uh, Cubase 10.5 pro. Um, a you're a musician, computer. aren't you, Joseph? Yeah. Yes, I am. Yes, I, am. <laughs> I hope so. Cause you got, you had the wrong advice of that. So yeah. <laughs> Cubase is, um, uh, yeah, uh, a 2014 uh, Mac Mini, and I just wanted to make sure, you know, because uh, as far as the noise floor goes and everything, how are the focus right for i4s for that? I mean, clean as a whistle. Yeah, they're, really? they're great. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's not because I'm. It, go okay. ahead. The, the thing is, is the, a focus right uh, pre is not going to give you any hissing or any noise or anything. It's a very, very quiet thing. Um, you the know, microphone so, can be the problem. Yeah. Like right, Chris is so, using a lot and a lot and is also very quiet. Yeah. Yeah. I, I just Googled it. I, that mic is so unusual that I've never heard of it and that's, <laughs> it's pretty hard to stump us, but <laughs> I, uh, I just typed it in and it is a noise rejecting large diaphragm condenser microphone. So when you look at the picture of it, it kind of looks like a normal side address microphone like this one, but Except it's not talking to the top. It's an it's end front address, address yeah. or front address. Yes. Right. So, yeah, it's yep. a unique design, um, and uh, yeah, I have absolutely zero experience with it. It might sound amazing. It could be the next it mic. I don't know. How did you find out about it? Um, you know, actually, 
originally I was going to try and get the, the Shure SM7B, which is actually $200 cheaper than this microphone. Yeah. And, you know, I guess more widely, obviously more widely known. Um, but uh, when I talked to Sweetwater, uh, no, never talk to Sweetwater. Like, oh, <laughs> I know, I know. And they were like, no, go for this, go for this one. It's a really good, you know, and I'm like, all right, maybe these guys are just trying to push off a product to me that they're, they're not selling. Right. So I went yeah. over to Zounds and they actually said the same thing. They said, honestly, they said Loughton makes great microphones. Sure. And this is this is one of the you know, this is a great microphone for the price and, and everything. So I said, all right, mm. you know, I'll pull the trigger on it and I'll try it out. And yeah. Sweetwater has return suck. policy. Yeah. You know, for, for six hundred dollars, hopefully it doesn't suck. <laughs> you know, shouldn't. Um, There's a lot of mics right. for half that that sound really good. So, yeah, hopefully exactly. it's really good. <laughs> exactly exactly and that's my thing too you know i just want to make sure i have i'm one of those people i guess that i i go out and i buy things and buy things and buy things and then i never end up doing anything with it yeah you know mm -hmm. so but i i definitely want to get started in this voiceover i mean i'm a correction officer i i i, I could retire in eight years and i'm like you know what i said i have no plans what to do after this so in, in eight years so if I could get into something like this and you know, it's still something in, hey, in the industry type thing. Look up a voice actor you know. named Chris Fries. He's been on our show. So if you yeah. go on YouTube, type in Chris Fries VOBS, you can hear an interview of a guy who is a great success story and was a correctional officer. Yeah, that's right. He worked in the prison. That's right. Really? Yes. That's yeah. right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Thanks Joe. Uh, thanks for your question. Man. Hey, thank you guys. Thank you guys. All righty. All right. Uh, this question from, real quick, just to be, yeah. Yeah. Jim McNicholas have, Either one of them, any for one of us, noticed that some mics sound better in figure eight sound than cardioid. I use an Austrian's audio OC818, and the figure eight really sounds full. Well, you've talked about this using Omni sure and have. using figure eight, and, uh, you know, it's, yes. you know, play with <laughs> yes, it. Yes, we have. What happens? <laughs> <laughs> I've done, done it a million times. I did a review on the OC818 and talked about it quite extensively on that. You go on YouTube, look at George the Tech uh, OC818. You'll find a whole very comprehensive uh, test and review of that mic where we experiment with that. So, yes, Jim, it is a secret weapon of any mic with figure eight. It can be a real improvement in some studios. Not always, but in some, it's awesome. Yeah. All right. Last and one. Last question. Well, it's sort of a commercial. What's your opinion of Source Connect now and its usefulness and popularity with voice seekers? I'm finding that. Most of the specs I see, it says the paid version of Source Connect. They don't want to use Source Connect now, at least if you're really talking to another studio. Yeah. But, you know, it yep, works great. They're, they're not compatible with each other. They never will be. Source Connect now is a perfectly fine tool. It's just not, it doesn't have the pro features that pro studios really want to have. It's really a very high quality foam patch. Yeah. That's what Source Connect now is, you know. I mean, it, I'm not saying you can't record over it. I've done podcasts recorded over it many times, and but it's still uh, not up to par in terms of quality consistently over an entire two hour say session that you're going to have over Source Connect. It doesn't. Yeah. It can't maintain the same consistent quality. It, it varies a little bit, and that's just because of the technology that it's based on. So that's why it's free. That's right. I was going to say, and that's why it's free. All right. Lots of great questions there. Oof. All right. Yeah. George and I are going to wrap things up right after these messages. So don't go away quite just yet. This is the Latin lover narrator from Jane the Virgin, Anthony Mendez. And you're enjoying Dan and George on the voiceover body shop. Well, hey there, hero. It's David H. Lawrence, the 17th. And along with Dan O'Day, I teach the class called the ACX Masterclass. And this is where we help voice talent and actors build a successful career narrating audiobooks via ACX for Audible and iTunes and all the other outlets. We'd love to have you. Our new class is starting in about a week. If you want to jump in, registration is open right now. And if you act fast within the first couple of days, we'll pay the first $300 of your tuition. Now, registration closes on Friday at 9 p.m. Pacific, so you have to act fast. We'd love to have you in class. I'd love to hold your hand along the way and help you be successful. Go to acxmasterclass.com. That's acxmasterclass.com. After the week of free videos, it's time to put the pedal to the metal. acxmasterclass.com. I'll see you in class. 
In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. Voiceactorwebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Yeah, hi, this is Carlos Ellis Rocky, the voice of Rocco, and you're watching VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're back to say goodbye. Anyway, uh, boy, lots of great questions there. Some other interesting questions, too. People, they try to make things so complicated. It's not necessary. I, I happen to know Brian from yeah. around the way. I don't know Brian personally, but it was nice to get to chat with him, but... He has a sound and a signal chain that's so uh, desired. I've had people ask me numerous times, you know, that sound that Brian Lee gets, how does he do that? What is he using? I want to get that same sound. So he just let the cat out of the bag, folks. He just told you what gear he uses. <laughs> now it's now it's up to you to figure out how to actually set it up. And as you can or, see, or afford it. I will not be uh, recommending a signal chain like that in a home studio ever because it is too freaking complicated. I mean, yeah. I can ever I can replicate what he's doing with an Apollo pretty pretty well, but it still doesn't work out of the box. It still requires some backward thinking, some creative thinking, and some rewiring virtually yeah. to get it to just do stuff. So um, keep that in mind, folks. Um, Alrighty, there you go. who are our donors of the week? Donors of the week include uh, Grace Newton, Philip Sapir, Trey Mosley, Shelly Avellino, Tom Pinto, Natasha Machevka, Mr. George Whittem, that's my dad, Brian Page, Patty Givens, Rob Ryder, Greg Thomas, Diana Birdsell, Ant Land Productions, Shauna Pennington Baird, Martha Kahn, our friend, Don Griffith, Stephen Chandler, and Robert Leadham. And that's, I read those names many weeks in a row because they subscribe from the donations link down below on vobs.tv. Great. All righty. Hey, you want to help with your home studio? You can go to georgeD.tech or home, vo home voiceover studio.com. That's Dan's place. That's right. So check us out. Uh, I'd like to thank our sponsors, Harlan Hogan's voiceover essentials, voiceover extra source elements, VO heroes, dot voice. Com. Dot com, voice actor websites dot com, and, and JMC demos, demos when quality matters. All righty. Well, uh, not sure who's going to be our next guest, but it's going to be somebody fabulous next week. And unless we're getting all the way to Memorial Day, in which case, no, not Memorial Day, to the 4th of July. So in which case, we won't be here for a little while because I'm going to Iceland. I want to see fire and ice so we'll be probably awesome. won't be back until july 25th or so near maybe after that and then we get into holidays and we get into all that stuff it's going to be kind of hit and miss for a couple of months but this year is going to feel like we're rolling down a coaster i know well, after last year <laughs> yep. what are you going to do um okay well we need to thank our sponsors we've done that we need to thank jeff holman for uh monitoring the chat room tonight thank danny bernstein doing a great back. job in clubhouse and hat merlino was our engineer tonight great job there and lee penny for simply being lee penny um that's it for us tonight guys you know but it really comes down to the simple fact of when it comes to your home voiceover studio if it sounds good, it is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. BS. Yes. Tech, 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 Tech talk. 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 Bye. <laughs>